Welcome to session 11 of Smarties, the kids online church from St Martins. Today we're going to be looking at the story of Paul and how he was once called Saul and what happened to make him change his name and the exciting adventure he had. So today we're talking about Saul who became Paul. Now when we first meet Saul in the Bible he was very very angry. He was angry with the disciples and all the people who started the church up because they wanted something that was different to the things that he believed. And he thought that if he captured all the people who believed these things were different to what he believed, then they'd disappear and they wouldn't have to worry about them anymore. And so he got permission from the important people in the temple to go and send all the people who believed in Jesus and the things that Jesus did and put them in prison. So he went off to Damascus where he heard there were some people who believed in what Jesus did and were spreading the news that what Jesus had done and he rode on his horse to Damascus. When he got closer to Damascus this big strong light hit him spang in the face smack, and he fell off his horse. He couldn't see anything. It was just light everywhere. As he was laying on the ground, he heard a voice and the voice said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Now persecuting means that you're doing things to hurt somebody else because you don't believe what they believe. And Paul said, who are you, Lord? Because he couldn't know who it was who was speaking to him. And the voice said, it's me, Jesus. I want you to go to Damascus. I will tell you what to do next there. And then the light disappeared. But Paul, he couldn't see anything. He was blind. He was traveling with some other people who also heard the sounds, but they didn't see anything. They had a slightly different experience. And they helped him to get to Damascus. So when he was there, he was praying in his room. And as he was praying in his room, God spoke to someone else somewhere else in Damascus. His, man was, his name was Ananias. And he was praying to God as well. And as he was praying, God told him to go to Saul and place his hands on his head. Now Ananias said to God, but I know who Saul is. He's the one who's sending all the people who believe in Jesus to go to prison. And I don't want to go to prison. But God said, you need to go and do what I task you to do. And so Ananias got up. He went out of his house and walked across to the city of Damascus to where Saul was staying. When he got there, he was let in to see Saul and he placed his hands on Saul's head. And these things like scales, like fish scales, fell across off his eyes and he could see again. Saul could see again. And Saul then got baptised and he went to learn more about Jesus. And so when the time was right, he could go and tell everybody about what Jesus had done for him, that he now knew the truth, that he wanted to tell others all about Jesus and the good things he had done when he was alive. And so Saul, who was very angry with all the people who believed in Jesus, became Paul, the man who wanted to tell people all about Jesus and the good things he has done. Today, Phil is going to show us how to make a mask of Paul, who was once Saul. Saul into Paul. Grumpy fierce Saul. Much happier, kinder Paul. To make this, you will need a cardboard paper plate. If you haven't got one of these plates, don't worry, you can use a um, cereal box or anything else that's thick card. A lolly stick will be useful or any other stick you can find lying around in your garden. Some sellotape, a pair of scissors, a pencil, and you might want a rubber in case you make a mistake. 
Also, some colours or some paints or anything you want to use to decorate your mask to make it look fantastic. Over to you, Phil. Okay, so today we're going to show you how to make a mask which is grumpy on one side and happy on the other to try and help you remember the story of Paul. So, what we need to do first of all is take our plate and roughly find the middle of your plate with a small cross. Somewhere, something like that. And that's where your nose is going to be. So we're going to draw the nose. And you can make it whatever sort of shape you want. And then I'm just going to go over that with a pen. And then I'm going to draw the eyes. So the eyes just go above the nose, or sort of the top of the nose. And then cut them out. Now this is a bit tricky. You might need a grown-up to help you a little bit, just to get you started. There we go. So we've got our eyes and we can rub that middle cross out now. And then we need to think about where our ears are going to be. So we're going to put our ears just about here. I think just below the eyes. And then you draw an ear line just up to there. So let's see where that is across the other side. That's about here. And we draw our ears on there, like that. And we take our scissors again, and we cut just around the edge of the ear, the bottom bit of the ear, and then around the bottom bit of the plate. And then with this mask, you can see I've cut out a bit of a hairline there just to make it a bit more interesting. So we'll do that just about, just about there. We'll give him a bit of a quiff. And once we've done this, it's time to colour the face in. Now, I haven't got time to show you do all the colouring in, and you'll probably get a bit bored watching me doing that. So you could use felt tips, you could use paints, you could use whatever you like to colour in your face. Now I'm going to put the other details on. So I'm going to draw the ears. And then on this side, I think I'm going to do the grumpy face. So you have an upturned mouth and sort of a bit like that and I'm going to give Paul, my Paul a beard so I'm just going to do a bit a few sort of hairy or hopefully hairy looking shapes the outline of the beard
And so there you go. Let's just do his hair. And so that's the grumpy face all ready for colouring in. Oh, I've forgotten his eyebrows. So grumpy eyebrows are usually a little bit spikier, aren't they? So we're going to go... Make them a bit pointy. My eyebrows are getting a little bit lopsided. And I'm going to do, you know, when you pull a grumpy face, sometimes you get wrinkle marks up here. I'm going to do those as well to make him look really grumpy. And then we turn him over. And we need to do the other side now. So, again, start with the ears. And there we have him, he's all ready for colouring in. So we've got the smiley face and the grumpy face. And then the last thing to do is to get your stick and a little bit of sellotape. And just put your your stick underneath there. Now I coloured my stick in the top of it so it would blend in a bit better. I did it the first time round. And just make sure the sellotape stuck all the way round. I think I'm going to need another piece otherwise it's going to fall off. And that would never do. So I'm going to get a slightly longer piece and just stick it over the top of the last one, just to make sure it's all stuck in place. And there we have our happy face and our grumpy face. And I'd love to see yours when they're all coloured in. I've been thinking about the story. Oh, yes. Yes. And having a wonder. Yep. And I was wondering about what it would have been like to have been Ananias. Mm -hmm. How on earth would he have felt when God told him that he had to go and find Saul? I think that would have been really scary. Because everyone knew who Saul was. He was mm. this man who was going to go and send anyone who said they believed that Jesus was uh, God into prison. Mm. And I don't think he did it in a nice way, did he? He didn't just go up and say, oh, excuse me, I believe you're following Jesus Christ and I'm going to therefore take you to prison. I feel like there might have been a bit of beating up going on. I think so. Because the first time we see Saul mm. is he's holding the coats for everybody as they throw stones at a man called Stephen, who is uh, who is, believes that Jesus is God. Mm. And that's why they're throwing stones at Stephen. That would be very scary. Mm. They weren't just pebbles. No, they were big stones, mm. and they really hurt. Not nice. And Stephen died because of it. So for Ananias, I wonder if you can just think how that would have felt being called by God to go and see this man who had a reputation for arresting people and having them hurt for believing in Jesus, how he would have felt. I don't think I'd want to go and see Saul. No, I wouldn't be excited about it. <laughs> I think I'd be doing everything I could to not go. But Ananias did. He was obedient. Did go. And he met with Saul. Yeah. Did as he was told. Yep. Yeah. And that meant Paul, because he became Paul, could then see again. Yes. So if Ananias hadn't done 
what God had told him to do, then Saul would have been walking around still blinded by, by yeah, God. That's right. Wow. And also, Paul went on to tell so many people about Jesus. Mm. In fact, it's certainly possible that we wouldn't know about Jesus in this country if Paul hadn't started telling the gospel. Mm. But he wouldn't have started doing that if Ananias hadn't done what God had told him as well. Yeah. Most likely. Lots of things to think about. I wonder who you think you might be in the story. If you imagine the story again, what character can you imagine yourself being? Can you imagine what it's like being one of the people that was travelling with Paul. They couldn't see what was going on like Paul could, or Saul. It gets a bit complicated. But they could hear what was going on and they saw that he was a changed man. Mm. Yeah. What would that have felt like? One minute they're off into Damascus to do business and the next minute they're going into Damascus for a whole different reason. Yeah, they must have been really confused. Yeah. Especially as they didn't see the light. Yes. I wonder if any of them started following Jesus because they saw the difference mm. in Paul. I don't know. Mm. It doesn't tell us that. No, it doesn't. I like to imagine they did. Mm, that's, yeah. I'd, because I'd Paul was so, so transformed, mm. so different. I wonder how much we live our lives today that transformed. I feel like sometimes I just take it for granted that Jesus is my friend and I don't always live the transformed life that mm. I've been called to live. I think in this country it's very easy just to live sort of everyday lives. Yeah. It's only when you get persecuted like Saul was persecuting those people who believed in Jesus that, uh, that you realise Christian life isn't quite like that. It's not mm. a, an everyday life. It's a different life. It's a way of leading things different, leading mm. yourself differently and being different to other people. So I guess when we're back at school again, if we see someone in the playground who's having people be mean to them, mm -hmm. then it's about not ignoring it. It's about going and saying that's not okay or getting a teacher or yeah. saying something and not just pretending it's not happening, it's but making a difference. It's all about making a difference to people who are usually ignored. Mm. Do you have any more thoughts? I think it's time to pray. I think so too. So, shall we wave our hands up in the air and bring them down in a bright light coming down from heaven like it did? Oh, yours went in a different shape. It did. Rub them together and wash them and hold them out to dry and bring them together very, very quietly. Dear Lord God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you saw Saul and made him poor and that he took your word so many places, to so many countries, to so many people, that he had a passion to tell people that you are God and that Jesus came to earth to die for us so we could know you better. We could have a relationship with you. Lord God, we thank you so much for that. And we thank you that you made Saul poor. Amen. Amen. See you next week. Bye. Bye.